This is my Hay House Writers Community Book Proposal Contest submission for the December 15th, 2022 deadline. Here is a picture of myself at the Spring Creek Marina, and here is the cover of Never Die With Your Pants Around Your Ankles, The Death of Vegas and Notorious Doc, A Prescription for Hell. One of the requirements of the course was to create an author platform, and that, for me, meant getting on to Book Whispers with Mary Turner Thompson, uh, creating a YouTube channel that I already had but actually start using it, and I expanded my website and blog. I now have over 7,000 views from 67 countries since March 2021. I have over 144,632 views on YouTube since the death of Notorious Doc, with viewers from 47 countries, and I have 342 subscribers. One of the Hay House assignments was to find books similar to your own, preferably read them and read the reviews. Well, I decided to reach out to these authors, and I am now pen pals with Mary Turner Thompson, international best-selling author of The Bigamist and The Psychopath, and she created Book Whispers and asked me to be a founding member. Jen Waite, best-selling author of A Beautiful, Terrible Thing, A Memoir of Marriage and Betrayal. We are Facebook friends and correspond regularly. Alicia Young, award-winning Australian TV journalist and author of four bestsellers and an incredibly super person, is now somebody that I also correspond with on a regular basis. Thanks to Hales, I met Tracy Rambling, owner and CEO of Gemini Moon Press, who introduced me to Jenny Alberti, co-founder of Women in Writing Intentionally Collective, who introduced me to Aaron Chamberlain, owner and founder at Right Now with Aaron Chamberlain. I also got to meet Michael Albertstein, author, teacher, and spiritual consultant at Luminous Living, and we correspond almost every day, and dozens of Hay House Writers community members who I cherish. For the Hay House writing prompt for May 2022, I wrote, what I want from my readers is to travel with a notorious doc through the 20 aerial toll houses and examine their own conscience as they hear firsthand how the late Harry Leo Duran violated all his oaths, both professionally and spiritually. I want the readers to take to heart the admonitions about sin and the effect it has on the soul of the sinner and on everyone who comes into contact with the sinner. The book includes passages from the Bible, the Quran, the Hadith, Hinduism, and Buddhism, and literature about soul contracts. It forces the reader to travel backward in time to see a man with so much promise lie about almost everything that ever happened to him or about everything he ever did. Those who sold him designer clothes and shoes and expensive collectibles will be horrified to learn he was penniless and that he had no way of ever paying off his credit cards. Realtors who were eager to take him on tours of expensive homes will be horrified to learn that they were suckered. Realtors should always demand a pre-qualification letter before wasting their time, but Harry had a way of bluffing everyone into thinking he was very wealthy. Some readers will want to learn what I discovered about men they swore they knew. Others will want to be titillated by the discovery that a board-certified physician with such impressive credentials could be such a despicable and depraved human being. Those who had sex with him may be shocked to learn that they were not special and that they meant nothing to him at all. Others will learn that he lied about his HIV status and they should go get tested, that he was deliberately infecting as many men as possible. <laughs> I want my readers to be shocked, horrified, saddened, sickened, and perplexed. 
I want them to experience the abuse I endured and then to celebrate at the end with me as I piece my life back together, meet many of the late monster's friends, sell off his possessions, get my piano that he destroyed repaired so I can play it again, and how I went from relative obscurity to helping set up a 501c3 nonprofit for the sculptor who Harry commissioned to do his portrait in scrap metal. <laughs> I want the readers to marvel at how I interviewed David E. Valise in the El Cortez Lounge, by the way, an oil painter from whom Duran purchased $9,100 worth of art. I want the readers to grasp that the monster left me a wealth of knowledge he had no intention of leaving me. I want the reader to feel the power of the divine that intervened when Harry was trying to get me to commit suicide upon his death or that he was planning on murdering me had he not succumbed to COVID. I was saved by a divine cosmic intervention. I repeat, a divine cosmic intervention. And I want the readers to have that point driven home into their hearts that there is a divine force in this world and they need to connect to it. I did and I am alive and well and happy at last. Although the book starts off with a nightmarish tale of horrific abuse by a malignant narcissist and psychopath, it has an incredibly happy ongoing ending told in a sequel. As a backstory, on July 8th, 2021, Little Man and his human were attacked by pit bulls on Last Chance Road. Yes, there's actually a road called Last Chance Road in, in an industrial area in Elko, Nevada. The author got the frantic call at night, raced to get the dog into the emergency surgery, and used medical cheek home to save the human. And I did. And I want my readers to be intrigued because woven throughout the story is the tale of an all-white Navajo yay blanket and the lives of the author, a dog, and his human. Little Man's Human saved the author's sanity and my life, to be quite honest, when the notorious doc died on November 8th, 2021. The human had lost his driver's license 16 years before and got it restored at exactly 2.30 p.m. on November 5th. On November 10th, he drove the author to Las Vegas and then salvaged what could be packed and put onto a Penske truck and in a second trip into a U-Haul, which got towed, by the way. They had a Bigfoot encounter on the first trip and were plagued by hauntings for months. I want my readers to want to buy the sequel where I tell the life story of a human through the eyes and ears of his dog, Little Man, in conversations with my dogs and cats. It's a tale of magic, healing, and incredible adventures. Hay House has given me a new lease on life, and I pray the reviewer who reads my proposal selects it for the team to read. The marketing plan for the book is to have posters placed all over the downtown area of Las Vegas, along the Strip, and in shopping malls. Posters and newspaper ads placed in Elko County, White Pine County, in and around the UPenn campus, Brown University campus, Ohio State campus, as well as all the other universities where he attended or taught, and in each of the communities where he once worked, should be far more effective in selling the book than traditional bookstore promotions. The Notorious Doc had a huge following on Facebook under several known de plumes and was well known in the medical community. He was, after all, a board-certified addiction specialist and a board-certified occupational medicine specialist. Alas, the largest target market is probably sex clubs, but I dare say I have no idea how you market to that market. 